Hi Dreamboats, I am joined today by Tommy Kelly from adventuresinwoowoo.com and also the creator of the 40 Servants Grimoire deck. Uh, I'm really, really excited to be joined by you today and I have so many questions to ask you. Thank you so much for joining me for a deep chat episode. No problem, thank you very much for asking me. I'm, uh, I'm deeply honoured, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, I, I want to uh, sort of first of all say that I have been playing with this deck now for a while. As you can see, I've got my little tabs along the top <laughs> where I'm like slowly learning and coming back to the different servitors available in the deck and everything. But I first came across you actually, not because of the 40 servants, which we will go on to talk about. I know a lot of people um, don't know about the deck and should, and a lot of people do know about it and swear by it. So we will be talking definitely 40 servants. There's a lot of 40 servants talk. But I came across you in the Chaos Magic realm when I first started to like do the Fandango in there. Um, and you seemed really approachable, sensible and with your head screwed on completely. And also no misogyny to speak of. So I was like, oh. wow. I I like so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chaos Magic realm, but we have some problems to sort out. OK, I'm just going to be frank about the whole situation. Um, so you seemed uh, like somebody that I could approach. And so that was cool because it wasn't the case with every guy that I came across. So I was being sort of quite discerning mm -hmm. at that time. I and mean, that was many moons ago. Yeah. I think that was even in maybe in 2013, 2014. Um, you seem to be an admin at the time for quite yeah. a big Chaos Magic Facebook group that every KO was on, including myself. Um, what's your relationship with that whole concept of Chaos Magic now? And are you still an admin for that group now? And like, what's Chaos Magic um, mean to you? The Chaos Magic group on Facebook, it definitely was at one point um, the biggest uh, Chaos Magic Facebook group, but it got deleted. I think it got deleted twice, actually. Um, it got deleted for um, private information was put up uh, of certain people and uh, they got it deleted the first time. But then it built back up again and it was, I think it was about 30,000, 35,000 people in it. Well, as you know yourself, like many of those people are actually into Chaos Magic, many are bots, many are real people. It's hard to know, but there was a, quite a considerable amount of activity on it daily, you know, so it was it was definitely, it was, a, yeah. you know, there was a lot a lot going on. Um, and I, I, I kind of, I was an admin of that, I think for, it's over two years, and um, it was a great time. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, as you can imagine. I, I always kind of say that um, CMG is like the worst place in the world, but it's also the greatest place in the world. You know, it, it's, it's full of the best people and the worst people. And it was a great training ground for me in learning how to deal with, um, online, you know, being online and being in groups and certainly how to be, become a better admin and how to kind of foster good community spirit and how to not let things <laughs> fall apart. Uh, and all of those type of things. But I, I, I did, it became too all encompassing. It was like, it almost became like a full time job. And it's just, you know, I just did not have the energy, the will, or the want to do it, uh, uh, you know, for, for too long. Um, and so I, I, I kind of left and I stayed in the group for a while. And then I unfollowed the group and then I kind of left the group. So it's, it's, um, it's that's kind of my trajectory from uh, CMG. So I can't really speak for it now. So I don't really know what it's like now. I assume it's quite similar. But any of the people who I was kind of interacting with a lot at the time have all kind of said to me that they've left too subsequently as well. So, but that's good, you know, like, you, you know, you don't want the same people, you know, when the group has been going for years and it's just the same people, it can become a bit gatekeepery or a bit stale or it can be, you know, oh, we can't talk about that. Everyone comes in here and talks about that, you know, some new people can't get a voice. So it's good, I suppose, that there's a, a turnover. Whatever. Yeah, certainly. I agree. I know that feeling when you walk into a group and it's gatekeepery or it's elitist or it's like, why haven't you checked the frequently asked questions before? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. This but question gets like, asked every day. And goes, yeah, OK, fine. That's that's OK. That's that's the function of these groups, too, you know, but it's. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah. I understand from the, the other point of view, if you've been in a group 10 years and the question is asked every day, then it's, uh, you know, it can be annoying, too. But, you know, there's mm. worse things going on in the world, frankly. <laughs> 
Right, exactly. And the thing that I like most about your approach to that massive, it was a massive group, and I cannot stress to you guys enough if you don't know anything about what we're talking about. This was a huge Chaos Magic Facebook group with a load of people in there claiming to be chaos, a load of people in there just being shit posters, a load of people in there who were clearly really on their shit and super knowledgeable yeah, and had yeah. read like loads of grimoires and could answer any question, and then other people that just wanted to rick roll you. I mean, it was everything. It was the whole spectrum. <laughs> and Tommy as a moderator as an administrator was so zen I don't know what it was but every time you came along in that group I was like how are you doing this without your brain blowing open but you were just like so chill and dealt with everything in a very chill manner so I found that to be I think that's how I ended up earmarking you as a potential community associate I was like I like you you're cool you're not losing your mind you you don't mind the rig rolling I love the rig rolling let's carry on with that but let's get rid of him because he clearly wants to shoot women yeah. in the face so really you know you had a really good way of discerning what was what would you ever want to run your own group or do you run your own group I do have I have a couple of groups now um the majority of my kind of um community I suppose is on discord which a lot of people have kind of migrated over to discord and uh, we've a pretty great group over there um I don't know exactly how many people's in it. It's hard to know what this code, but there's definitely over a thousand. And there's, I would say, there's definitely a hundred regular people in it, you know, that, that, that interact uh, on a daily or weekly um, kind of basis. But um, there is still a, there's a 47 Facebook group as well, but I, I don't spend much time on Facebook at all anymore. So I kind of only just duck in every now and again with some great uh, mods and admins over there. I need to, to look over that place now, but it's a lovely group as well. Just kind of, I learned an awful lot from how to how to be a good admin and how to kind of foster good community spirit within groups from CMG. Um, and it's kind of something that I was able then to bring into my own group. So all of the groups I kind of have now are on part of are really nice. And, the re you know, it doesn't mean you can't discuss things or you can't get annoyed or whatever. But there's, the, you know, there's a respect level that that, that is constantly there and self-checked in that, if, you know, when someone comes in who's all <laughs> Let me see. All fairy magician-y um, and all uh, badass. They, they get cut down fairly quick, but not in a, in, a, in a kind of a nasty way. And it's just it's not tolerated. It's just it's you're, you're, it's not fed. That kind of energy just isn't fed. And I think that's a good good way to approach it. The thing I, I find about um, admin and uh, the, the greatest lesson is that to, um, the job of an admin is to diffuse the situation, not to assert authority or not to boss people around. It's to get to Get, you know, get on to the next thing as quickly as possible. Whereas I feel an awful lot of admining is about throwing your weight around or proving you're right or making a point. And it's, you know, you're, you know, you're not the leader, you're the janitor. That's, that's your job. And uh, I think when you approach it that way, it, it's, it's much easier to deal with people. That's yeah, yeah. You're coming in, cleaning up a mess and then like stepping away and it's free space again, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to uh, to think of it similarly. I don't like to bring my personal things in apart from just like obvious set rules, like don't be a Nazi or whatever. Obviously, aside from that, we're just going to do what we're going to do and see what happens. Um, yeah, that does make sense. Um, I will have to come and join your Discord. I'm very good, curious good. now yeah. about your Discord. Have okay, you right. much time on Discord at all? It's, Sorry. Have, have you spent much time on Discord? Yes, I'm slowly, yeah. slowly learning from having my own Patreon community, having a Discord. Yeah. And so I go in there once every couple of days or so and we have our interactions. So I didn't like it at first and now I'm warming to it. And yeah. so, yeah, I would be really interested to come onto your Discord. That'd be really cool. The way to kind of uh, look at Discord is think of it more like a chat room from the early internet than like um, a forum or Facebook. You know, it's it's stream of consciousness rather than threads. You know, it's just people talking. It used to be, and once you can get that kind of switch in your brain, that it's you know it's not really, you know, when you go to like a forum or something online and you can look up a thread, it'll be a whole thread about something. It's not really how Discord works, and that can kind of throw people a bit. But uh, once it's you get interesting. into it. It's interesting. That's actually the reason I didn't like it because yeah. that's how everything started for me. Because I'm 37 now, so like right. that. That's it, it. Reminded me of the the very first forums that I was really really interested in, and I was there every day. And it was like I was fascinated by serial killers and true crime. So I was right. into a, that kind of thing. I was on a self harm forum for seven years. So right. I had all of these flashbacks and these weird right. like yeah, feelings yeah. coming back of like this is how it used to be before we did things differently. So yeah. actually, actually, I get what you. Mean. Mean. like just go back to the nostalgia and the sentimentality of when we first yeah. got it 
But yeah. for me, it was like, no, this is what it used to look like. I don't want this. But I think I actually do now. <laughs> it's right. taken yeah, me a yeah. while. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think the future of uh, of magic and the occult is online? And and what do you what do you think when you look at it right now? Like, what do you think is going on right now that's interesting? Well, I think the kind of the interesting thing with chaos magic is it's become kind of fairly mainstream over the last couple of years, which has been a fairly interesting thing. Where it used to be just you know dirty little secrets that we had on the on, on the part of the internet, and then politicians and you know started using it, and you know groups and all of this, and it became you know, very strange. Um, but in one sense, it proved that, that the kind of ideas behind it worked. Um, but what it also sh showed uh, was that that's maybe not always a good thing. <laughs> you know that like when you have the whole co idea of that's part of chaos magic, the belief shifting or, you know, nothing is true, everything is permitted. And that's good in one sense on, um, you know, on a micro level, on your own level, on a personal level, you know, where you have things like fake until you make it or stealing yourself or, you know, in some way invoking an energy that you don't feel you have and all that. And you can go out into the world with that. But then on the macro level, when it becomes things like fake news and propaganda and uh, alternative truth, which is the same idea on a, on a, on a grander scale, um, while it definitely seems to work, you can kind of go, well, is but is that really, you know, is that a good thing? Is that is that for our benefit, you know? Um, and that's still, I suppose, it's hard to know because it, it, it's something that's been around in the modern world for a while now. It's just that the kind of more magic occult element of it seems to be a bit more prevalent or at least a bit more talked about in these, you know, in, in kind of common discourse. Like it's a, you know, it's like, a decade ago, no one on Facebook was talking about it in the public. And now everyone's mother is talking about it in public, you know, on Facebook or, or you know, has, you know, conspiracy theories. It's all it's all out there. You know, the whole thing is. It so. is. It is. I, I could definitely put myself in. I could definitely give myself a small inkling of blame there at being kind of somebody to be like, oh, hey, no one's talking about the dead disco of chaos magic. But I'm interested in it because I've just discovered Phil Hyde. So I'm going to make a video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, I mean, like, you know, there's, it's. It's nothing wrong with anyone. I don't think getting, you know, letting the secret out or whatever of it is, is there's anything wrong. It just it, it kind of amplifies all of the, I suppose, all the problems that are with it, but also the, all the good bits as well. But there is a kind of danger, I suppose, that it can get kind of watered down in a sense. And that can be dangerous in a sense. If you have all of these things, like say from the new age, where you have uh, ideas about positive thinking and positive outlooks, and then that turns into like law of attraction and, you know, the secrets and it's getting watered down a bit. And then you're getting into things like, you know, um, if you get sick or something wrong, something bad happens to you in your life, it's your fault because you didn't have the right thoughts. And so something that might be, you know, that's completely, you know, um, victim blaming and uh, spiritual bypassing and all that. The people, are, uh, you know, who are having hard times in the other side of the world, they maybe chose that for some sort of spiritual lesson. So we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to do anything about it. And that all comes down from a kind of a very something getting very popular or very widespread and then getting kind of watered down from what it originally kind of probably the intention was behind it, you know. So that could probably be something that might happen with the, the occult stuff as well. Well, not it probably will happen, like, but just to be aware of it and, you know, but there's not much you can do about it. That just seems to be how the tide of ideas that once it gets into the world, that this is mm. what you know, it takes on its own life. Yeah, you can't help it. I think with the spiritual bypassing particularly, I mean, there's, there's just going to be some people who really um you know they they do their spiritual bypassing without even recognizing it they're listening to the definition of it and thinking oh yeah that's bad but still doing it themselves i'm sure okay. i know that like i spiritual bypass in certain ways and catch myself doing it um so yeah i think i think certainly the more mainstream something becomes or the more people practice it the more risk there is for things like that or for, um, you know, there are more people these days than used to be coming to me, asking me things like, if I think of a bad thing in my imagination over and over, will it happen, Kellyanne? Yeah. And I'm just like, I certainly hope not, because the entire horror genre would have to be thrown out. Like everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, everything yeah. that was thought for a horror movie would have to be gone because it would be happening. Yeah, <laughs> so don't yeah, worry, yeah. imagination is, is, is a very safe place. Yeah, and, and I suppose another kind of thing as well, and um, I've been listening to your audiobook this week and I've been really enjoying it, and I really like your approach because it's very much like a, a chaos magic almost uh, approach to, you know, witchcraft in that, you know, find what works for you is, is kind of the, the thing. But the, um, the, 
the thing that can come from that, which I think only happens when it kind of come, gets a bit more mainstream and people don't get to uh, become in contact, say, with books like yourself or, you know, the original kind of core of Chaos Magic, when they just kind of get a secondhand feel of it, is that the, the kind of hard work element of it sometimes can be, people can forget about it or don't want to do. When you have something, you know, when you say to people, um, find something that works for you, or the Chaos Magic thing is, you know, um, you know, do what works and get rid of all of the, the old things. Don't worry about all of that, all the rituals, all the, you know, um, pomp, all the, uh, the dross and all of that. And just do the thing that works. What can happen with people sometimes is that they get as far as until it gets difficult and then go, oh, well, obviously that doesn't work. And, you know, to drop it. So the if it's then just kind of more widespread, then it, that's how I think it kind of gets watered down because people just don't put that kind of effort into it. Whereas if you were part of, say, an old style um, coven or you were part of, a, a, you know, an occult society or something that where there was a very set teaching method or something, then yeah. you kind of forced to do the hard work as well. The things that you don't really gravitate to work towards or wouldn't naturally go towards, but having done them, you know, inform your greater kind of spheres. Yeah, you so, need to do it to go up into the, you know, to to initiate in, into the next yeah. thing. It's like an initiatory system. And so you have to have done everything. And some of the things will be the things like, you know, basically the, the trigonometry, but the magical version where you're like, oh, this is yeah, so boring. Exactly that. I have yeah. to have a basis in yeah. it to know. Or even like kind of to know that you don't like it or to know that it doesn't work. You can't really know that goetic invocations or evocations don't work uh, just just because you don't like the idea of it you know, until you actually do it. You know, people, there's a thing in case magic where people, before they even try to do it the way it has been prescribed or, the way, you know, it's in the book, they immediately change it. You go, well, you have to know, the whole idea of case magic is to do what works. And unless you do it, you don't know if it works or not. You've just decided prehand that it doesn't work because you don't like the idea of, it. say, it's angels if you're coming from like a Christian background and you want, you know, nothing to do with <laughs> any of that kind of stuff. But it, it, is that the part of the lesser banisher, less, less or banishing ritual of the pentagram that actually is doing the banishing? And you won't know until you do it as described. And I'm not necessarily saying it is, but, uh, you know, you have Absolutely. to find out. It's like when I went to college, I did holistic health studies in college, which was it was quite fun. We did like Reiki and aromatherapy and Indian head massage and all of this stuff. And when we got to do aromatherapy, which I had a, a big interest in, I just kind of wanted to learn, you know, the oils. I wanted to learn the different smells or whatever and how to use them. But there was a whole section on where you had to learn all the muscles of the body, all the bones, all the systems, which I wouldn't have done if I had just learned aromatherapy by myself, because it's not something I would have gravitated towards. It's mm -hmm. not something I had a deep interest in. You know, I just wanted to learn about the oils. But it was only by learning that that, the, you know, the actual bigger picture of aromatherapy revealed itself to me. So that's kind of how I always kind of look at any of these kind of magic stuff, particularly on case magic, which has that emphasis on just doing what you doing, what works and what people here is doing what you like. And, um, you know, that unless there, there's a kind of a bit of a, of being forced to do some some of the hard work or the graph that you don't want to do, you're not going to get the full picture. At least I, I don't think so. Anyway. Yeah, definitely. At the end of my book, Rebel Witch, actually, I talk about something called mystical magpie syndrome, where you just I've, want to, you know, you're kind of like a, a magical Pac-Man and you're like, oh, my God, that, that, yes, that, that, I yeah, want that yeah, one. Yeah, one, yeah, one. Yeah. And actually, that doesn't afford you enough time to sit with the thing that you've decided to study initially and actually just give it the three months, give it the six weeks, give it the whatever. Just like just do the certification or read through the book. Don't get through the first 20 pages and go, you know what, this isn't flicking my switch. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. there is that form of self-discipline, you know, it's like it it really is. Um, it doesn't take much to just say, you know what, I've started, so I'll finish and or I'll try this thing. Um, I'm not really like taken with it. It doesn't seem to gel with my personality or what I'm doing or my particular, you know, paradigm. But that's the point of being a paradigm pirate. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go across the the wild occultic seas and see if this thing works and see if I actually enjoy it and if I can do it again or tweak it. So I think mystical magpie syndrome, too, can be an issue that has ballooned since the ballooning of discussion about magic and the occult online is that yeah. you could just like every five seconds you're just like what's that hashtag what's that thing what are you talking about what are you doing what are you oh my god everything looks so delicious and actually yeah to have that self-discipline um people often used to say to me when i first started talking about chaos magic i love chaos magic 
it because it's all about just being chaotic and just doing whatever the, whatever the fuck you feel like and yeah, i'm like no, yeah. no no that's not the use of the word chaos is not being used in that way like yeah, actually yeah, yeah. chaos magic is is um is usually more you usually find a ko would be more disciplined with things like record keeping because tweaking is so you know some something that is so important that you remember when you're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. ritual that comes from such a an old system that you don't really like but you might want to figure out once you've done it how to make it flick your switch and like light up your disco so actually chaotes are more disciplined in a lot of cases and i think a lot of people weren't getting that in the beginning yeah and it's it's that kind of thing as you're saying about the the definition of the word chaos and I, I it's like rather than anarchy which we also have a poor definition of meaning that let's lawless or whatever it just means no rulers uh, but chaos, in a sense, in this sense, is potentiality. That before it becomes anything, you know, it could literally be anything. Yes. So it's chaos, but it's then, you know, it, it's the job is then to make it something, you know. And you're right about the the, the, the discipline that's needed for, you know, the proper follow the chaos magic kind of um, ethos is finding out the bits, taking the notes, finding the bits that work by doing it, you know, and keep going rather than kind of, that what you're saying that the magpie stuff is so true it's like going starting something oh i didn't i didn't win the lottery immediately g g jump to the next thing oh shamanism didn't get me my my ex back you know let's jump to reiki or whatever it, and it's like you never learn any of it you know or you never really yeah, yeah. definitely definitely and and when you just said about chaos meaning potentiality not meaning like it's wild it's crazy it's a warehouse pie just do what you want it's about potentiality and then what that becomes and so it's much more of a kind of like it's less of an adjective meaning you know give yourself free reign it does it does mean give yourself free reign but the reason it's called chaos magic is more about that potentiality and that kind yeah. of like that that was hard to explain to to people uh, and also yeah you have an influx i suppose or a crossover of discordianism as well that people have an uh, interest in both which would have a bit more of the flavor of yeah. trolling the chaos in the sense of causing havoc for yeah. the sake of causing havoc so like um go back to we were talking about cmg there would have been a huge discordian element in, the, in that as well but i until you recognize that you might just think that that's what chaos magic is too but it, it is a separate it uh, is separate stable, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Do you have much interest in the Church of the Subgenius? Just going on a tangent. Um, just we on the podcast not that long ago, we did we watched that documentary that came out and it was really really interesting. I found it fascinating. Um, uh, have you seen that documentary? It, it, it's not that it's a couple no, of years. No, I haven't. Uh, that's why I went. Oh. It's on YouTube. So I'll send you a, a link to it. Um, it. It's very good and very interesting. Up up until that, I kind of had a, a vague notion about it, but um, yeah, interesting. You know, interesting people, and I kind of like that kind of. Um, that form of kind of culture is, is is fun, you know, and it, it, it but, you know, it, it, in a sense, it's powerful and successful and does what it says in the 10 to a point, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. The Church of the Subgenius is unbelievably fun and made me, it made me finally realise, like, I'm just going to invent my own religion at some point. It'll be fine. Uh, not in a Jim Jones way, but, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without yeah. Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling more you. Tolkien, more yeah. Tolkien, less Kool Aid, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, yes, I, I I thought I thought it was I think fun is a portal to power where you're like, my God, this can be fun. It's like it's it's whole grown. It's like a big garden that's all there for me. And I get to read through all this really awesome stuff. And of course, like I'm a writer as well. So all these essays about it and stuff. And uh, it's really interesting. And I love Bob Dobbs. Um, uh, so Bob Dobbs does it for me. So I will definitely watch that documentary. Um, I think the thing oh, okay. fun as well is is. A lot of occultism, traditional occult occultism, is kind of seen as very serious and very solemn. And I kind of like the idea of injecting fun into it as well and not being so serious around it. Because, I mean, I'm sure divinity is a much better sense of humour than I have, being if it's more an amplified version of what we are. So why wouldn't it, you know, enjoy fun as much as we do? But there is this kind of sense, I'm not doing it right unless I'm very serious. You know. Yeah, it's got to be very solemn. Yeah, yeah. And one of the main things that I re recognized when I first started working with um, like disembodied beings and stuff is why ca why can't I just sort of like sh um, shit the pineapple, as my my mother would say, and just like talk to this goddess like she's yeah, in the yeah. room. Like, Mm. You know, why does it have to be very flowery? And I have to, she has to have 300 like names, monikers that I come in with first. You know, she's like the shepherdess of the dead and the daughter of Loki and the girl, like, captain of the, why don't I just go, hey, hell, bit of a shit one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lost it. I'm just gonna have a cup of tea with you this morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly that. But well, I suppose with the the, the come back to it, if that works, you know what I mean. Sometimes you might have to say the 300 names, 
Um, I love it. I love yeah. the 300 names. But yeah. but I was forcing myself and I was like, you know what? I like to do that on Samhain when I've got the apples laid out and I've got like the incense and like the whole room is like, a, you know, it's it's a, a it's a cathedral to hell. And then it really cooks on gas. Whereas if I force myself to say it all the time when I just want to sit down and be with this goddess with which I feel very familiar and I cannot feel familiar if I feel like I'm supposed to be reciting something and it's supposed yeah. to be yeah. happening like this because that's not what happens in conversation so why would that happen with her you know so yeah it's what works it's always what works for me because it's never going to be about how it works because i do not believe i'm ever going to live long enough to know or be brainy sure. enough to know or, or if it's possible to know anyway but i think what we're pointing at there is a bit like it's um like a sort of spiritual imposter syndrome in a sense like who am i to talk to these people you know so i must have to do all this kind of 300 names and all the way go well like you can just sit down and have a cup of tea see what happens you know yeah. and, um and you know call yourself you know join join the group and just put you know put yourself there and 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 do it rather than thinking that who am i to do these type of things who am i to have the experience why would a god talk to me why not why wouldn't it you know yeah yeah exactly that's that's like the greatest thing i think that anyone could could reply to somebody why would a god talk to me why the fuck not Mm, why not yeah, yeah yeah why not like it's yeah that there's so much more i could say on that but i must but i have promised some people <laughs> that i will talk about this yeah. oh my god okay so you've created a deck unlike anything that i have ever seen before okay yeah. um uh, could you explain it a little bit to my audience could you explain what you've actually created with the grimoire of the 40 servants the complete guide to the magic and divination system so it comes with the the 40 servants cards and it also comes with this very hefty book you it would be disrespectful to call this a little white book this is uh yeah. this t t takes you on a bit of a journey so if you could explain to my audience what this is that would be great so um well, we're all fairly, I suppose, aware of like what a tarot deck is. Even people who aren't involved in any of this kind of stuff knows what a tarot deck is, where it's a set of cards where you shuffle them, ask a question, and then take out a set number of cards and in some way interpret these cards to give you some sort of insight on whatever it is you're trying to find out about. So in a sense, uh, well, because there's a very kind of strict layout of what a tarot deck is, if you don't follow that, then it's, it's mostly known as an oracle deck or a divination deck. So this, the 40 Servants would come under uh, an oracle deck or a divination deck, not a tarot deck, in that it doesn't it doesn't have the same pattern, doesn't have the same suits, doesn't have the same characters. I'll just show some up while you talk. But the um, it, would, it would be the same idea where you can use it strictly for divination, where you um, ask a question, take out some cards, and then um, you know divine the answer from uh, what cards are uh, coming out for you. But it also has a, a separate kind of um, role or power or use uh, in a magical use in that the, each character can also be used to call up or to help you or you can invoke them, you know, the same energy within yourself, whatever way you like to, to um, work with them um, to help you solve problems, you know. Um, and Tarot Ken in some way is sometimes used like that too. I know Paul Foster case from BOTA had a kind of a, a sense of looking at the tarot at each, is particularly the major arcana going through each each of the different characters and talking to them and finding out about them. And uh, But this one is very, they're servitors. And in the sense of a chaos magic, a servitor would be a thought form or an idea um, and an encapsulation of, of a kind of um, an energy or a contraction. If you, if, if you were coming from like a non-dual sense where everything is one, and then it kind of splits down into usable forms rather than immediately always going to the high energy. It'll go, well, this is the love contraction. This is the, the fortune contraction. This is the hate contraction. This is the war contraction where we kind of have, you know, classically with, say, Greek and Roman gods, where you have Mars and Aries being, you know, the, the war gods or you have Athena as the love or whatever. So there's this idea of contracting the gods into a kind of or contracting divinity into mm -hmm more manageable parts, I suppose. And so that's kind of what the, the 40 Servants was, is aiming to do, is to contract greater divinity into a more easy to use and more de definable um, mm. character, I suppose, uh, you know, or servitor or servant. Um, yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, I must say I have used it for, for a number of different purposes, but I have used it for magic and it does fucking work, guys. <laughs> it yeah. works. It yeah. works. It uh, works every time I use it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it, it's it's it seems to work. See, the worst thing about magic is that it's hard to know why something doesn't work, you know. And people go to me, oh, well, it worked for Kellyanne, it works for all of these people. Why doesn't it work for me or whatever? And it, it's it's a difficult question to ask because without knowing your life for a start, uh, we don't know what's going on or whatever. Sometimes just magic doesn't work. And it's the same with divination. Sometimes you just know you're not getting an answer. And I suppose you kind of have to be OK with that. Um, but I think so if you've any sort of a system that works more than it doesn't, then I think you're you 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 should stick with it for a while and try and find out a bit more about it because yeah, uh, so magic is a fickle thing. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's why that's why things like forty servants have a cult following because you get those people for whom it works more often than it does not. Yeah. Yeah. And even if it doesn't work every time, like magic for me does not work every time. Like I don't, I mean, meditation doesn't work for me every time. I don't get a decent gym session every time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have a good night like, good night out dancing every time. Um, so uh, to me, if something works more often than it doesn't, I'm going to keep it. And I think that's why it does have that cult following. Um, you said in in the book that you designed this for people like you who needed this kind of tool, and it wasn't yeah. uh, it wasn't available. Do you still regularly use it, and do you I find do, that it yeah. works for you magically? Yeah. Um, I, I completely and utterly selfishly created. I, I, you, you, you're being generous to me there. This is I made it for people like me. I really made it for me because um, that, and I think one of the reasons why it kind of works so well is that I wasn't trying to pander. Or I wasn't trying to create something that other people would like, or you know that a, um, a wide selection of people would be okay with, or whatever. It was just you know, what is it that I want to use? What are the the kind of things that I would find helpful? Or you know, if I had my perfect magic system, what what would it be? Not what would be a perfect magic system for the world, or what would be a perfect magic magic system for CMG, or what would be whatever. It was just a very very selfish act, thinking that maybe ten other people might be interested in it, and that would be cool. Um, and so that was that was definitely the kind of um, the spirit behind it, um, and I think that was a lot to do with why why it was successful because I wasn't trying to um, please everyone with it. But uh, the so down to the second part of the question, yeah, I do use it. I use it more for uh, I use pretty much all the time for divination. The magic element of it probably not as much. I don't do an awful lot of magic now, um, just because where, where my kind of spiritual journey man is going it, it, it kind of it, there's a bit more of a where i am at the minute it's a bit more with um going with the flow a bit or whatever not trying to um it's hard to explain but not trying to kind of force things or not trying to change things and just kind of see what that and it's it's a temporary thing and it's just kind of to balance it spending years of trying to very much force the world to be what i want it to be and it's kind of a relaxation on that or whatever and also a lot a, a lot of I kind of have an awful lot of what I want, you know, like even the things I want now, I don't really want, you know, and that's not to say that I've all the money in the world or I'm rich or I have uh, every relationship is fantastic or I have everything I want. It's just the wanting has changed, you know, the, it's that I'm kind of become more aware of that thing that I want isn't going to fulfill the thing that I'm looking for it to fulfill. And so I'm looking to fulfill the original thing. And that kind of is it becomes a bit more of a the directionality of it is kind of um, different. Mm. You know, it's kind of mm. kind of like a, a sort of, I suppose, in a sense, the low high magic divide thing, which I really don't like that. It's kind of like black magic, white magic thing. I don't like that either, but it, it, it's we know what it is when we when we talk about it, even though it's problematic. Um, and while I'm, I'm absolutely no problem with the low magic getting the stuff, I love the stuff, I quite like a lot of stuff. Um, there's something about the, the transformative nature of the, of the magic that I, that I enjoy. So in a sense, when I say I don't do magic with 40 servants that much, what I mean is I'm not asking them to get me things or to do things for me, but I'd be trying to invoke or um, work on that part of me that is represented by that that servant. And so yeah. you kind of look at it in one way in the, there's two kind of approaches, I suppose, to spirituality or magic or whatever. And one of them is like the, 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 the kind of occult, occultist um, and the other one would be kind of a bit like a mystic, where the occultist starts empty, I suppose, and looks to the external for magic. And so when my that's certainly where I came from. So I look to external things like the four servants or to gods or to spirits or to that thing. To, and then having found that, it comes back. And so the final stage is that it, it becomes like a non-dual thing of one thing, you know, whereas the mystic starts with some sort of um, direct revelation 
and this could be like a witch who knew there were a witch when there were three or something like that. There's an inner knowing, and then they go out and try and find the magic in the world, and then it comes back, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that, that when I'm talking about directionality, that's what I mean. That from being an occultist who had to go looking for the magic externally, now that it's on its way back, the kind of one thing thing seems to be that way and I'm going that way. It's not making any sort of sense. It does make sense. It does. Make sense. Sense. It does. Yeah. It's making me laugh because I've had a few instances where people have said, people have said to me over time, like in the comment section of my YouTube, they'll go, you call yourself an occultist. And I'm like, I don't actually. I have yeah. never once referred to myself as that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But my my definition, or at least one of my my Maddox dictionary definitions of occultist is exactly what you just said, that we are looking to the external for what is, you know, for, for what is there that we can ingest. Yeah, Whereas yeah. A, a mystic, it's uh, we're, we've located the seed and it's whether or not we're bold enough to allow it to grow. And it will grow into external revelation, which will later be picked up by occultists, I guess. It's it's like snake eating. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like there's there's three stages uh, and the first two stages are different than the occultist and the mysticism in the direction. The occultist looks outside and brings it back. But the, the, the third stage is always unity. With mystic, it yeah. starts in the middle, goes out and comes back to unity where you find yourself in the external. Um, mm. Well, you find the external in yourself. Um, but it's, yeah. it's, if it ends up in the same place, well, it's just a completely different approach. And, and if you, I suppose if you don't, aren't aware of that you can and um, you think you can think you're wrong uh, you know um, well this isn't the, you know, the experience I thought it was meant to have because you, you feel you're a mystic looking at a cultist or you're an occultist looking at a mystic or whatever so, you know and it's, those words are just whatever you know yeah, they're just, yeah you can end up being um really being deep in toxic comparison about words that are just useful to label and categorize things not to to make you judge yourself yeah. I love words because it's just useful to differentiate one thing from another. I, I don't use words as, you know, to, to bat on people over the head with and say, this is what you are and this is what I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just yeah. literally, literally just makes it useful. Mm. But I think that point of unity is uh, is a very beautiful thing to meditate on. The point where the serpent actually grasps hold of its own tail and it's like, yeah, OK, exactly, exactly. In terms, yeah. it's yeah. external and, it, and that it, all of it has come together to be the case. But wherever you find yourself is the thing is the is the good place, and not to kind of um, worry about where other people are. In the sense of that, if you're at a point where it seems that you do need external things to help you, then that's where you are, and you do need external things to help you because that's the point where you are. Um, and so then, like say, you find out in an awful lot of kind of religious kind of talk would be partitioning saints in in Catholicism or asking gods to help you. Uh, in a cult, you would have, you know, people getting into demonology or doing such, you know, stuff like the, the 40 servants, you know, creating servitors or talking to different gods and stuff like that. And then once you become familiar with these kind of things and these kind of energies or whatever, you start being able to just be recognize them, uh, you know, and that it's not there's a part in you that's also that. And so you can kind of grow the best that is you within them. And I think that's kind of the journey. But you're, you're probably most people who come to magic in particular aren't coming to magic because their life is great and because everything is wonderful. Exactly. Now, they're coming because there's some sort of problem or some sort of need or there's some sort of emptiness or whatever. And the only way, unless you're blessed to be a mystic or whatever is the correct word we want to use for that, blessed by a knowing from... It's whatever uh, you want everything. to as well. It's like earlier when you were saying about, you know, if you need a certain, if you need to to study this grimoire uh but it's also like if you want to or if you you know if you need to I, I, yeah. I, i'm not actually that certain that i need to walk with the norse goddess of the underworld actually yeah. at the beginning at the beginning in 2012 i just fucking wanted to i was just watching all these people like saying so i was hanging out with my dark goddess this morning and she said and i was just like oh well, did she now well that's <laughs> for myself see it started from desire it's yeah. and a lot of the things that i do in my practice began from sheer desire and just carried on from there you know um oh hang on are we in trouble oh no yeah no it's okay my assistant it's like someone's trying to use your youtube and it's like um well i guess it's me <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i, don't, I mean i you know, I, I, I can't I can't really do this right now at this exact moment, Danny. <laughs> I'm going to see if you come back and if he tries to use it one more time, I'm going to go over there and say, look, you can't do this right now. Talk to Tommy. 
<laughs> been waiting to talk to Tommy for a long time. I can't do this. Someone's trying to use my YouTube. If it's not Danny, stop. Okay. All right. I'm a very powerful <laughs> KO. Don't test me. Yeah, not yeah. today. Don't test me today. Um, you said that you almost not quite channeled this mm. out of you. That is very exciting. Um, yeah. A lot of people have a lot of people have asked me over time about like you know getting through creative blocks by kind of going into an almost a trance state or a state of almost like not really or being disembodied in a sense or doing it on the astral even like wanting to create something but feeling like they can't do that with their ego in the way they have to put yeah. their ego in the naughty chair do you almost but not quite channel a lot of other things is that how yeah, you make all, things i would say all creativity for me is like that but I, I have to be careful i don't mean channel in the kind of um abraham hicks there's a voice and my voice changes or, or you know that there's someone talking to me over yeah. my shoulder or it's a particular entity or anything like that it's more um, Alan Moore has a great kind of idea around well, he had, he, this thing he calls the yeah. deer space, yeah, um, which is a, it's kind of a, as a, as if it's something over there and you take ideas from there and you bring them back, or someone like Elizabeth Gilbert who wrote E Pray Love, but she's a great TED talk where she's talking about inspiration and people how, in a sense, ideas come to people rather than people go to ideas. And Young had similar kind of sentiments where he said that um, ideas of people, people don't have ideas. And uh, um, so I kind of feel that uh, the creativity, in a sense, is it's about getting out of the way of of the idea and try, uh, trying to let it be whatever it wants to be. And by, that's kind of what I mean by the channeling of it is, is that I, I'm not in a sense, I'm the conduit for something rather mm -hmm. than I'm creating. It. It's like you have the block of stone and the statue's already in there. You just have to get rid of the bits that aren't the statue, you know, and it's almost like a you're remembering something rather than you're creating something. It's like if you're writing a song and you kind of have an idea comes to you or whatever, and you're kind of playing around with the guitar or the melody and you go, no, that's not it. That's not, and then you go, oh, no, that's it. It's like you've remembered it rather than, you know, it, it's something like that. Mm. And, and I kind of, that's why I feel all kind of creativity. It's like, it's like when people write fiction books and they talk about suddenly their character has a life of their own and it's, starts wanting to do something that they hadn't planned for it you know and that, that happens an awful lot with people who write fiction and it kind of it's something like that it's trying to get out of the out of the way it's like you say put your ego on the on the naughty naughty chair for a while it's 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 it, it's using some other kind of mechanism than what we use i suppose when we're trying to do i don't know excel excel worksheet or something it's not quite that you know it's it's a, it's a different movement it's, yeah. it's, and it's got no specs it's not like no. someone came along and said i'm going to pay you like x amount of money to make this thing and it has these specifications to it whatever yeah. if it is your thing and if you indeed can create it as you would choose to create it then i guess what you're saying is like i'm kind of hands off and i just let yeah. it go oh Oh, okay, that's what's happening. Fine, fair enough. What do you need me to do? Want... All right, fair enough. <laughs> and, if, um, if you yeah. don't keep up your end of the bargain, in a sense, it'll go find someone else, as we all know, because many times have we had great ideas for a film, for a book, excuse me, and then don't do anything. Nine months later, someone else has written it, and you go, well, you had your chance. You know, the idea is coming in into this world in, in some form, so... No. So true. Yeah. The, idea, the often ideas are just in the, they're in the birth, they're in the, the cosmic birth canal. And if you want to be its mom, get on it. Like literally it's yeah, time to yeah. <laughs> make that decision because somebody else will birth it. Yeah. That's very, very true. Um, yeah. So I wanted to ask, I've used, so hang on a second. What do I want to ask? Do you actually like all of the 40 servants that you created? I really wanted to ask that question yeah. because I didn't like them. Um, you know, when I know when you were going through your flow channel process of like making them and just letting them, yeah. be, letting it, let, letting them come through, there must yeah. have been some where you were like, meh, or like, Ugh, or like, no, oh, no, no, not really. There's one that I dislike. There, there's definitely ones I like more <laughs> or that I, you know, but like, it's hard to like the kind of more negative ones anyway because you know there is a repulsion I suppose in there like you couldn't say I like the depleted because it's you know what it represents um, yeah yeah or I am um, uh you know the opposal because it's you know it's oppositional and I know what that energy is like and I don't like it but I, I as a I, I, I don't dislike it and I think the way you're asking me is there a particular personality or something that I, I don't but there is ones that do gravitate towards but I do understand being that as I said it's something that I created for me it has my aesthetic so I can understand that say some of the artwork might be off-putting for people 
Um, particularly if you're um, a gay man, I'm sure the carnal would mean absolute nothing to you. You know, it, it just wouldn't jive at you at all or uh, represent me, baby. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But but it's it's um, or some of the other stuff as well. You know, and, and also I know I have a particular style of art that mightn't um, work for people too. But you can just use the sigils if it's such a, such a case. You know, or um, yes, you know, yes. it's 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 not. Um, Mm. No, it's not. Don't get too hung up, I suppose, on the on the representation. I mean, the carnal is the carnal, and whether that what does that represent to you is more important than what's on the card or what I think it is. You know, yeah, it, definitely. You should have a personal experience with this thing because I certainly have a personal experience with it, and this is mine. And this is why I'm kind of, I find that that I don't want to kind of put too many rules on these things or talk too much about certain things in in some ways because I don't want people to think that that's the only way to do it. You know, or that's the only way you can feel about these things. If you have a certain feeling towards something, if you have a repulsion to certain things, you can look at it, you know, or you can just go, that's not for me or whatever. But it, that's it's important to realize that that's that's you, you know, and, and that to not mm -hmm. then take this UPG, which is, as you will know, the unverified personal gnosis um, and then demand that that's what it is, you know, and that, that, that we can do that a lot in particularly in chaos magic, that we have some sort of insight and we think then that everyone else should agree with that. For it to be true it doesn't it only needs for you to think it's true so if you have a particular fondness or repulsion or whatever it is towards a servant or anything you're working with um mm. you know you follow that you know a, a repulsion i would I kind of question why i would look into it personally i would do that um, uh, yeah yeah i was gonna say i quite enjoyed the feeling when i first went through these cards um of the few cards very few that I did not uh, jive with at all. And me being me, like, I really don't, like, I I, 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 I go straight to shadow. So, mm. so for example, I love your depiction of the devil. I think not only is it artistically beautiful, um, and it is, that's how I like my devils. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I like my depiction of the devil. I think it's beautiful. I've also done a lot of beautiful magical work with it. So it's become more, I'm more affectionate towards it because I know that it's been a magical tool for me. And the sigil, um, every single, uh, if you don't know guys about the 40 servants, every single servant has a sigil. Um, and it goes through that in the book. And, and so you can use the sigil for that particular servant and that servant's energy and theme and everything. Um, and so I no, love I'll just interject say that um, all of that's on the website as well. You don't have to buy the book. You don't have to buy any of this to use it. All of the information on the website, the sigils, the artwork, the descriptions, okay. all of it's there. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting to me that I did not like the opposer and I had a real problem with him. Well, you should <laughs> still, in, in fairness, you know, it's like. <laughs> Well, you think so, do you? And I, I'm, I didn't like the monk either. So for me, as a kind of like shadow like worker, monk. that's interesting. What, what was, what, what? I didn't what? like the monk because he was in the half dark and he looked like a bit of a, like he, he, he was, he was in. So he's sort of like half obscured, right in the dark, and also because the look on his face gave me a sense that he knows something I don't know, but he's amused by it, and um, and I was resentful of that, and I found yeah. it to be scary. Okay. Um, actually, we've worked with the monk in my Patreon because we have a one card riff and the monk came up. I was like, I'm using the 40 servants this month. Let's see what comes up. And it was the monk. And I was like, I'm really glad because now I have to go through and I have to really spend the whole month with this guy who yeah. is one of my one of my like sort of members of the 40 servants that I have not been sure about. And I came out with a much more. Well, a very beautiful connection with with the monk. I think I get entirely what the monk's function is, and it, and I needed it at exactly that time. Mm. The quietness, the simplicity, the pulling away from what is superfluous or, or a distraction, um, you know, and that the feeling of being able to just like come to selfhood and not have not have all of that static, that white noise. Um, that was one of the main things about the monk that made me feel so much more loving of the sigil. That the sigil isn't just the back and the back of his head. But it's also kind of like a jar that just yeah, goes yeah, over yeah. you. Yeah. Like the and then like, yeah, yeah. Goodbye, everyone. No, can't hear you. I'm in the jar. No. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, the dawn. Yeah. I'm in the jar and so I did I came to love him um but yeah me being a shadow worker like any any repulsion any anger any feeling of like I'm not sure about you I don't really I'm not really feeling anything from you or I'm feeling something from you where I don't trust you or whatever like of course I do find that to be like 
okay, I'm riveted. Why don't I like this person? What is yeah, the problem with yeah, this yeah. person? What's this person ever done to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I was wondering if you liked all of your servants on a personal level. Um, the ones, but, I suppose, um, that I, there's ones that I, the contemplator when it comes up, I always find very hard to um, work out what it's talking about. Even though, like, like I, I know, I know what it's talking about, but um, when I'm doing a divination, it always seems to be, Right, because I think it's always trying to point at more than just saying, just stop thinking about that for a while. There seems to be it always seems to be something else, and it, it, it's there's a, a lack of clarity. Yeah, I'll say particularly it. particularly when I'm when when I'm doing divinations for other people, that it, it's kind of, but it, mm. that could be coming from the fact that you if you're doing a divination for someone, you don't just want to say, oh, well, just stop thinking about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's like how helpful is that? But um, yeah. Yeah, that, no, I know what you mean. It does seem to be that there are layers to it. You've put layers in the image as well, yeah. um, for sure. Yeah, I think it's a difference between contemplating something from um, like a transpersonal place and then contemplating something from an egoic place. But that's what I've kind of like picked up so far. There is one yeah. client of mine who is like deep into the contemplator. And um, I'm wondering, I'm like, I'm really wondering now because I know that he's going to watch this interview. Yeah, um, I, think, I think the problem is that it, when you're trying to do reading something, you are coming from a, from the ego place you know and you that because you're using words you're using your brain you're trying to articulate blah 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 and the contemplator is like the exact opposite of that so it's hard to actually put that yeah. in in, in in terms that are the opposite of what he is you know so but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, what, there's ones i like like i mean everyone likes the witch the witch seems to be the most popular by far um which is beautiful yeah um, which is the most popular by far let me see if i can find her and just uh give a glimpse of her wonderment in seconds yeah um she's quite far back oh i really love the nurse as well and of course i love the chat i love the chase you know because i love nuns yeah um i'm just i just find them so interesting i They're, have the witch here that i can show if you want oh yeah the yeah there's the witch that's the favorite yeah for sure beautiful <laughs> I love the light on her face and just like the, the skeleton around her and that she's in a graveyard. It's just really, I instantly trust her and I want to follow her and I want to learn. She, she has those uh, eyes that if you walk around the room, they, 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 they follow you, you know, that, that, uh, that's, uh, really, yeah. I'll have to test that in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, what are you working on now, Tommy? Is there anything in the pipeline? Are there, are there things that you want to let us know about? Yeah. Um, I'm actually, um, just, I'd say about 99% finished with um, the second edition of the Grimoire of Forty Servants, which uh, it'll be out. And, but it's one of those things, if you have the first edition, you don't need it. It's, it's mostly correcting spelling mistakes and just clarifying things. And there's a, uh, the Four Devils are in it, which are other servitors that I've created after um, the Forty Servants, which um, a, a more, even more kind of simplified contraction of uh, things where it's, it's for health, for wealth, for wisdom, and for happiness so just very four kind of those type of things um and there's a few more rituals and stuff like that but the the, the bones of it are, are you know are in the first book or as i said it's, it's on the, the the website too mm -hmm. um, i'm also doing a comic at the minute i've done a number of comics over the years the one i'm doing at the minute is called turbine syndrome that's been going well it's slow because it's um it takes so long to do these things and i do so much so many different things that it's a uh, it's hard to, to devote time so we, and because the type of style that I'm doing with is quite intricate um, you know you can set aside a day or two a week and you're still only getting like a page done and stuff and it's tough but uh, so that kind of feels like it's been going on a long while but the, the next episode of it should be out in the next month or so anyway. Um, okay awesome awesome so down below i'm going to link your website and i'll link to everything that i can find on the 40 servants and also the comics that you do and stuff like that um contact information etc and social media yeah thank you so so much for coming and talking to me i really appreciate this and i've been massively looking forward to it so i know this is, this is a really interesting one thank you and if anyone has any questions or anything i'm easily found on all the, the websites and the, the social media and all that but send me an email i answer everyone uh it might take me a day or two but i uh, and don't feel if you even if you feel it's a silly question ask me anyway no silly questions only silly answers so <laughs> that's lovely thank you tommy thanks very much thank you thank you thank you i'll put it up in a i'll put that one up in a couple of days i think um it's okay if you're happy with that yeah 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 perfect that's brilliant i'm really i really really appreciate your time and i feel like i know so much more about it now than i did before um 
because yeah I've got a couple of clients working on it with me now um right. so because they because I recommended it to them and then they were like this you know I have this one client um uh who said that uh and I mean they do a really really incredible stressful job high up in the medical profession and started using it and said that they stopped using it for a couple of days and it was notable it was okay. like I ha- I was more stressed out I was less centered I didn't know I, I couldn't make decisions I was like this is the tool this is it <laughs> so I was like this is really exciting um so yeah it is certainly a very well thought through tool um and, I, and I'm certainly uh, considering having the the sigil for the 40 servants tattooed on me oh so really that's- really well, that's cool yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no! Now I've just gone into full fan girl now. Like, <laughs> let him let him leave first. Okay, I'm gonna go and find out if it was my assistant that was trying to get into my YouTube, or if right. actually okay. someone's trying to hack and no, delete my 600 that. videos. YouTube's been very um, weird this morning because I couldn't play any of my own videos today, so I don't know what's going on. So there might be an issue with actually YouTube. So. Oh, okay, that makes me feel a bit more calm because I was like, well, if I say yes, it's me because it's it literally is probably Danny trying to put on the video that we're putting on today. But All if right. I say it's yeah. me and it's like some troll. Yeah, <laughs> Oh yeah, and you lose yeah. your channel. Good luck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we've got it all on a, a hard drive, but it'd still be annoying. Thank you so much. I, I hope Thanks. you have a lovely, lovely rest of the day. You too, and have a great weekend. And thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Talk Thanks. Again. Talk to you soon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye.